I'm not having to have that dress up part of my life anymore. And quite honestly, I missed that. I missed the high heels and I missed feeling like nothing makes me feel more powerful or more feminine than wearing a pair of heels. Mm -hmm. And that part of my life was gone. So um, it was it was a struggle psychologically too. and welcome back to this week's episode of It Takes Grit. I am joined in the house today by Alison Lombartis. Thank you so much for coming all the way from Dallas in the, in the building. <laughs> Thanks for having me. I'm so excited. And you are in for a real treat because we are actually having a huge collaboration that is happening in January that we're gonna be talking about together to make you girls feel confident and sexy and ready to go for 2020. So I'm gonna dive straight into this. Tell everybody what it is that you do and what you have online that really helps a lot of women. So I started out as a blogger in 2012 and um, I started as a style blogger because I fell into a yoga pants rut, which I'm sure a lot of people can relate to. Hands up. <laughs> I'm, I'm currently in. <laughs> secretly, I spend way too much time in my yoga pants still, but we're not gonna talk about that. Um, so I started blogging as a way to be an accountability partner, to get out of my rut and chronicling my fashion journey as I was exploring new ways to dress. I left corporate America. I wasn't sure what worked for my new lifestyle. So I started my blog, Get Your Pretty On, and I have just been on a heck of a ride since then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And like now the blog has actually blossomed into something that really helps people seasonally. Exactly. So I started my style program. It's called Style Challenges by Get Your Pretty On in 2014. We're going on five years now. And each season I give women a shopping list of pieces to go out and buy. So the first thing they do is they shop their closets because most of us, we know we have those pieces in there. <laughs> You've <Guilty>. seen, yes. <laughs> I've just shown Alison around my new place and there are so many boxes. So I feel like that's the, okay, so that's the first step is yes. going through. Yes, going through and seeing, they check off the pieces they already have on the list. Then when you walk into the store, you're armed with this list. So you know exactly what to buy. And that removes the decision fatigue of walking in the store and saying, I have no idea what to get. So on this list, I have a mixture of closet staple pieces, you know, classic items that most women already have in their closets. And then each season I add in the latest seasonal trends. Mm -hmm. So once you have the pieces on the list, then I give you a different mix and match outfit idea every single day for 31 days. You're going to get it in your inbox or if you log into our membership wow. site, it's in there. You have a calendar, you get to hang it in your closet. You know exactly what you're going to wear every day. We have printable PDFs with all of the outfits, with style tips in there. It makes getting dressed the easiest thing you do all day. We even give you links if you want to shop entirely online. You can do that. And the best part is it works from petites to plus sizes and every single budget. That is it works for so rad. So you're literally having like, because everybody like likes the luxury of having like a personal shopper yes. and a personal designer. But I mean, we can't, this is not affordable. Right. So you are literally showing people what to wear each day. And so like the night before they just get their, their outfit ready. Exactly. Yep. And they already know they have their pieces in the closet. And you, you hit on a good point because most of us can't afford to pay $150 an hour to have a stylist come in yeah. just to shop your closet for you and show you different outfit ideas. This is it's 39 bucks. <laughs> yeah. And you have that access. And I'm going to tell you exactly what to wear every day. And all the accessories that come with it. And yes. it's like not about having to have loads of clothes because I feel like this is where I need to get better at. Right. It's not about having all the clothes. It's about having the right items that mix and match. So exactly. out of each season, how many different like tops and bottoms do we have to like play with? So each piece gets paired up in at least four to five different ways per season. And it varies per season, but we generally have around eight tops, around six bottoms. We have a couple of dresses. We have lots of toppers like moto jackets, denim jackets, things that can change up the looks of the outfits. Mm. You have things like your basic closet staples, like a, a white tee, black jeans, you know, the things that most of us already have. And then you have some fun footwear. So you get to pick the footwear that works best for your lifestyle. If you're right. you know, more um, 
on the go, running mm -hmm. errands or whatever, then you get to pick the shoes that are gonna work best with your outfits. And then of course we top it off with accessories. Yeah, I love it. And so what we're talking about with our collaboration, I think this is, it's just so perfect. And even when you said like calendar, I'm like, my girls, you guys <laughs> love the calendar for the workouts, right? So what we're gonna be bringing you is exactly what workouts to do and exactly what outfit to wear for the full January. I yes. mean like 2020, you're gonna be completely dialed in and set up so that you, there's no, there's no reason that you can't get your workout in and feel amazing and show up every day. Exactly. You're going to look great every single day. Yeah. And so what was it that made you go, I want to create this blog in the first place? Like you said, it's about like you were wearing yoga pants, mm -hmm. but what, what was there something missing inside that you felt like you needed to share this? Cause there's loads of people out there. They're like, I feel like I'm in yoga pants all the time and I'm just probably not going to tell anyone and I'm just going to keep going like this. So what was it right. that made you go, I'm going to change this up? So I, for me, I really did fall into a rut and it, and I call it a rut, but it felt more like it was starting to snowball into a depression. Honestly, I stopped feeling motivated. I wasn't really working out much anymore. I was gaining weight. Things around the house, even though I was working from home, were getting messier. I just noticed the snowball effect of all these things happening. So it wasn't just affecting my appearance. It was affecting my motivation. It was affecting how I felt about myself. It was affecting my relationships. Like I was not feeling sexy anymore because I just wasn't taking care of myself. And I knew that there was something that I had to be able to change immediately. Like some one tangible thing that I could cling to. And for me, the first thing that came to mind was I need to get dressed tomorrow. I need to put on makeup. I need to fix my hair. I need to get dressed. And so that's what I did that first day. And when I did that, I felt all this motivation. I felt so much better. Like everything was clicking. And I picked my daughter up at school that afternoon. And she looked at me when I got in the car and she's like, what happened to you, mommy? And I said, what? And she's like, <laughs> you look pretty. And oh, yeah, wow. So, so what was the job you were doing at the time? I was working from home at the time in corporate America. I was a telecom engineer. I worked for Verizon for 14 years before I transitioned into Get Your Pretty On. And okay, so you were working from home and you were working for a company, corporate, but you were just not, you didn't need to get, why well, you, you, you didn't no. need to get dressed. You didn't no, need to get dressed. I Skype calls, so I had absolutely no reason to get dressed. Even wash your hair. Them. No, yeah. the accountability was completely gone. You know, one of the great things about working in corporate America was I got to wear my pencil skirts and my he high heels and my blouses and just like get dressed up and feel girly. And I didn't have that anymore. And that was really such an important component. And I think a lot of women who transition into running our businesses from home or working from home, we tend to get into that rut and it's hard to have that accountability for getting ready on a daily basis if we're not, you know, some, some days we might be the only person that sees us, you know, in the yeah. mirror. So <laughs> yeah, it's hard to and do And even that. if you are going into work, it's like sometimes you just get a little bit slack and like, mm -hmm. and like laid back with your outfits, like because you're going for more comfort rather than something that's going to make you feel, you know, amazing. And, and it's having that, that desire to be like, you know what, I am going to make an effort today, right. not for anybody else. It's right. really for yourself. It really is. It so really that is. day, when you're, would you feel like it was what your daughter said back to you that was like a bigger wake up call? Honestly, yes. I think that's the thing that made me commit to it. Otherwise, I may have fallen back into the rut again because I realized that she was noticing and I was setting an example for her of what it meant to be a working mom and taking care of myself. And if I wasn't setting a good example for her to do that, then, you know, I, mm. I felt like I was failing her in some way. And I think that that was, that was the catalyst for me saying, I've got to do something to hold myself accountable, which was also the catalyst for me saying, I need to start a blog because I knew if I blogged and chronicled the journey and posted my outfits, that that at least was going to make me hold myself to continuing to do it. So did you think about creating a blog before this day? Was that something that was in your head? Not really, no. Uh, blogging was completely new. I was not a stylist. I was not a blogger. Um, it was something that I had to just DIY, teach myself along the way. And so it was literally like, okay, I've had this epiphany that like actually showing up for myself doesn't just affect my productivity. It also affects how my family feel. Right. And so was it the next day straight away that you were like, I'm going to start blogging? I think it simmered for a couple of weeks and I started looking into it and, you know, stumbled across WordPress and then I'm just, I love to figure things out and I love doing research and I just kept doing all this research and I was like, oh my gosh, I have to do this. Like I, I have all this knowledge now, I have to do this. And so I got a blog up and running actually pretty quickly, uh, you know, realized early on that I needed my own URL, not to go with the, like word, whatever, yeah. on .wordpress .com. Yeah. Uh, and you know, I did 
I did have a little bit of forethought about it, thinking what if, you know, later on down the road, this becomes something else. Like, what do I want to do right now? Like start with Mm. the end in mind. That's what I always tell new entrepreneurs or new bloggers or anybody on the influencer, whoever it is, always start with the end in mind, especially when it comes to technology, because it's really difficult later on to change things. So then your, what was your intention where you say you had the end in mind? What was that end? I didn't know. <laughs> so I you didn't, didn't know? No. <laughs> yeah. No, I didn't. It was more of just an accountability for you to get going. Exactly. It was an accountability. It grew very, very organically. There were a lot of women at that point who did not have those resources because this was 2012. Pinterest was just starting. Mm -hmm. Instagram didn't exist. So they were following bloggers and, you know, people on Facebook, but it was mainly haute couture, high heels or dressy things. There was not anybody in the niche of casual, cute, put together outfits. So affordable too. And affordable. Yes. Yes. So I think that's what really started things catching on and snowballing. To the point where whenever I was offered a severance package in corporate America, I said, you know what? I'm going to take six months, completely devote to this blog and see what happens. And that's when the idea for style challenges came. And actually, that was a, it came from my readers. I said, what can I give you that's going to make your life easier, that you're going to, you know, it's going to make it easy for you to get dressed every day. And they came back and said, give us a shopping list. Tell us what to go out and buy. Like I go to the store and I have no idea. I see all this stuff. I bring it home. I used to be a terrible shopper. I would go out and buy a whole bag of stuff, bring it home, stump it out of my bed, look at it and say, this doesn't go together and it doesn't go with anything else that I own right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I wanted to give that gift to my readers of knowing that when you go out and buy something that you're going to know exactly how to pair it up. Mm. And that's how the first capsule wardrobe was really born, was just out of that um feedback that I got. So have you just taught yourself how to be a stylist? Yeah, I've taught myself everything. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I was going to say, like, you've literally, you're like, I didn't, uh, there was one point where you go shopping and you're like, you brought everything home. You're like, this doesn't even make any sense. Right. So how do you get from like being a hot mess to now like being perfectly curated (laughs) and put together and there's not, there's not not a pin out of place. (laughs) So the thing is, I am very equally right and left brain. So I have a very strong creative side and I have a very strong analytical side. I think that a lot of it had to do with, I create outfit formulas. Mm. So the formula works for all body types. It works for all ages. It works for all budgets. Because I was an engineer, I think I'm able to conceptualize these outfit formulas and mix and match the pieces into different combinations. And, um, you know, I can't say that's a learned skill. (laughs) It's just something that really naturally comes to me. Mm -hmm. And I have an eye for design too. And I think that really helps with the styling portion of it is just having a strong eye for design and then having that analytical side that says, okay, you can take these pieces and make them work in these ways. Is there a day that you wake up and you're like, I don't want to put on the outfit that is I'm supposed to put on today. Like, yes. how do you, do you just go, right, today's not the day I put that outfit on and I'm just going to be in sweat? Or you're like, no, this is how I push through. Okay, so there, yes, there are two facets. <laughs> Sometimes it's both. <laughs> Sometimes it's both. Sometimes it's both. I do allow myself those days where I will be an athleisure all day. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think you can have just like totally cute, put together outfits like you're wearing mm-hmm. right now. And there's nothing wrong with that. Where I was falling into the trap was when I would wake up not work out, not shower, not do anything prior to just throwing on the yoga pants and staying that way all day. It was more about a self-care type of thing. Mm. If I do the athleisure now, I'll usually get up, work out, you know, get my shower and change back into something cute and put together. It's almost like you can reward yourself by wearing workout clothes as long as you do your workout. I I like that because then you're like, well, like I feel that's really true. Like, I don't know. It's kind of like you feel like you're cheating against yourself by wearing the workout clothes and you haven't actually done the workout. Yeah. Like the joke, none of my yoga pants have been to yoga. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I love that. So when you were growing up as a kid, did you feel like that? Did you ever have an, an epiphany or an imaginary that this is what you would be doing, would be serving other women? Yes. As a matter of fact, I don't know if I've ever told the story. When I was 15 years old, I just really felt like I received a message from God that I was meant to serve women. And I never knew what that was going to be about. Like Mm. I, it took me all of these years before that came to fruition, but I just always had this feeling in the back of my mind that I was supposed to be doing something that really helped to serve women and to help them 
find confidence. And I think a lot of that had to do with the fact that I was not confident when I was younger and my confidence is something I had to grow into. And I just feel like it's such a gift to be able to give that like you do with helping women, you know, feel great about their bodies and with what I do with style and helping them feel fashionable and, and feel great in their clothes. And I just think that that confidence component is the thing that I'm supposed to like, that's my gift to mm. women in the world is to give them that and, and to be the conduit to help them. Why do you think you weren't confident? Uh, I think a variety of factors, honestly. Um, you know, just upbringing was probably a big part of that. I, my mother never really had confidence, so I didn't see that role modeled in a lot of ways. And um, my two older sisters, you know, kind of the same thing. We just never really felt good in our skin. And, um, you know, my mother was overweight most of her life, so she wanted to be invisible and to hide a lot. And I mm. think that I brought a lot of that with me. Like for many years, I felt like I was living in the body of somebody who was overweight, even though I was a healthy weight, because I had just picked up on so many of those cues and things whenever I was younger. And I think that that's something I really had to battle back against and change my mindset about that, you know, this is not true <laughs> and challenging myself in that way. And I think we have to really challenge the beliefs that we have instilled in us when we're younger. And that has so much to do with the amount of confidence when we become adults. Do you feel like, what was the relationship like with your mom and dad? Do you feel like there was something that, you know, you weren't getting, the, your mom wasn't getting the recognition of like her being felt like that she was confident and therefore mm -hmm. that just like, it goes on to you? Yeah, you know, I think with her, she struggled with weight from the time she was very young. I wanna say probably like six or seven years old. Right. So this was something that was, <laughs> that was a part of her life and a part of something that she never really got through. I mean, she would go through times in her life where she would lose a lot of weight and then she would gain it right back again. So um, I think just watching her struggle through that, uh, she was very self-conscious, didn't want to like go to our events that we had, like our chorus concerts and things like that um, because of this thing that was holding her back. So I think that that really was one of the big factors in in the way that I felt about myself was, you know, my main female role model was feeling this way. So mm. I didn't really have other women that were modeling something different. So when you're, you're talking about your mom and do, was there anything that you went through with your own body? Like, did you ever, were you underweight? Were you overweight? Were you all kind of in the middle? Like, where do you feel like you were when you were like, I guess we all compare ourselves to other people. Sure. Uh, but where was it that you were at with, with your weight? I think, you know, I was always pretty normal weight, but again, I had this almost, I don't even know, it was like this cognition of being overweight that wasn't true at all. I remember in fifth grade when I was sitting beside a girl in my class and she was overweight and I wasn't, but we had our legs beside each other and I've always had very muscular thighs and I looked down at her legs and mine and mine were like twice the size of hers. And I just remember thinking, oh my gosh, I am so fat. Mm. And I carried that along with me, you know, even into my twenties, I really felt like, I felt like I had a weight problem even when I was a size two. It was the strangest thing, but it was something over time. I love my body now and I feel like I'm healthy and I work out from a place of wanting to honor my body and keep it healthy, not from a place of punishing it or trying to, you know, fit into a certain size. It's not about that anymore, but it was really a journey for me of acceptance. I think number one, number two, just knowing that the things that I was telling myself weren't true at all. And what things were you telling yourself? That just constantly, you know, I would look in the mirror and berate myself like oh your thighs are too big or your butt's too big or you know all of the things that I just didn't like about my lower body and all through it went on all through college it went on all through my 20s and was um, this things that your mom was saying to herself or did you just feel like that was something that you were picking up on I think it was something I was picking up on I mean I did hear her say things about herself she never really said anything about us I mean she was or my sisters and I she was always if anything, like she would say complimentary things mm -hmm. about our bodies. She never really put us down or put an emphasis on weight at all. I think it was just all things that I absorbed and it was just yeah. by osmosis. What, what was your dad's reaction to you, like your, your mom and like her being overweight and like, did he give you recognition and tell you great things? Uh, no, I did not really, I didn't really have much of a relationship with my dad. I mean, he lived in the house. He worked a lot. 
Um, so he and I never really had conversations growing up being totally honest. Like mm. we never had a conversation growing up. Was so, he just, he was just there, but he wasn't. Yes, basically. Mm-hmm. Yes. And he never really said, I mean, obviously if we didn't have conversations, he never said anything about weight. I yeah. didn't pick up on certain clues though, throughout my childhood about, um, just feeling worthless, I think was a lot of the, the messaging that I was picking up on in, Mm. in my formative years and just really carried that throughout. So yeah, I think that was a big part of the confidence issue. Yeah. And I guess like, you know, if you, if you feel like you're overweight and you're not comfortable in your body, like wearing clothes and going shopping is like, it's like the worst thing. I know Mm. my, I know my mom, I helped her lose 42 pounds and like, she then started to be able to go and buy tops and and bottoms where she just wear bags and shoes. So when you were going through this, even in like your early twenties, like, did you enjoy shopping? Did you enjoy clothes? You know, I did. <laughs> I <laughs> loved clothes, but I was broke. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> in my early 20s, like heading into, like starting my first job. I had no money at all. Um, I like my dream was I just wanted to go out and buy all these pretty clothes, but I wasn't able to do that. So, mm. um, so no, at that point, I wasn't really into style as much as I wanted to be or as much as I moved into a little bit further along in my career whenever I was able to do, you know, all the fun dressing up stuff to go mm-hmm. into the office. Yeah. yeah. Now you have three kids. Yes. And how old's your oldest? 23. And you had him when you were? 22. 22. I'm doing the math, yes. Yes, so, 20, <laughs> so you had him when you were 22. How did you, you know, we always talk about like when people have kids, like how their, their body like comes back or bounces mm-hmm. and it's never the same. Mm-hmm. How do you feel like your body changed after having a baby at 22 and then after the other two? <laughs> because like 22s, like you can... You can bounce back pretty oh, yeah. fast, right? You, did you did you feel much? I was back you... in my jeans right after I had yeah. Devin, like right away. I was back in my jeans. I, I think I wore them home from the hospital. It was crazy, insane. But then that's wild. <laughs> so then two years later, I have Aubrey, our yep. daughter. That whole pregnancy was totally different. I was sedentary. I was sitting at a desk job all the time. Mm. I was eating crap. And after I had her, I'm thinking, oh yeah, I'm going to bounce right back again. No, it did not happen that time. Honestly, I was still wearing maternity clothes three months after I had her. And then I didn't really start my weight loss journey until she was about two years old. And that's when I started working out for the first time because I realized that all the things that used to work were not working anymore. And I Mm. had to get really serious about it. I hadn't consistently worked out until that point in my life. And I've pretty much consistently worked out from that point forward. Well, now you're pretty, you're pretty gone hold on like exercise. Oh, like yes. that's a real massive part of your life. It really is. So before you created Get Your Pretty On, what was your style like before? Would, would Was it good? Was it, was, it, it was, yeah. yeah. I think it was, yeah. yeah. Because I had the corporate job and I knew how to dress that part. Mm-hmm. I think where I got into trouble was when my entire life shifted into this completely new realm And the old past life closet did not suit this new life. So I had that down. Like I knew that. That person. Yes. That person Mm. and what she wore and what her, what her uniform was basically. And then whenever I shifted into working from home, like I have no clue. Like what do I wear? I'm, my lifestyle is so much different now. I'm doing things like going to the school to, you know, do events Mm -hmm. or whatever, but I'm not having to have that dress up part of my life anymore. And quite honestly, I missed that. I missed the high heels and I missed feeling like nothing makes me feel more powerful or more feminine than wearing a pair of heels. Mm-hmm. And that part of my life was gone. So, um, it was, it was a struggle psychologically too. I think. And then it's getting from the corporate. That's one type of style. And mm-hmm. then you've gone into working from home. You've yes. come, you've got, it's another style. It's yes. not, it's a comfy style. It is. Um, it's a very loose style. And then you've now got to rebrand yourself mm-hmm. into the CEO of Get Your Pretty On. Right. Like, how did you then like create an, cause the, the same identity wasn't the same as the one that is in corporate. Now you've got a new style. Exactly. How did you, what was that? How did you create that? Was that something that was, you just feel like another voice inside of you? Yes, yes, exactly. So I drew upon my closet staples that I already love. Like I wear my black skinny jeans all the time. So this is something that I can easily transition from putting this on with a pair of Adidas and Mm -hmm. a graphic t-shirt and a denim jacket to dressing it up a little bit more with the moto jacket and the leopard booties. Mm -hmm. So I think I was able to take a little bit of that corporate past life with the fun heels and the dressier pieces and mix those items in with the closet staples from the casual pieces that I wear. So I feel like my wardrobe is so functional now. I don't really 
dress up, dress up a lot with, you know, dresses and heels and things like that. I do for special events, but uh, I just feel like my closet really, really works well for my lifestyle now. Mm -hmm. And I'm really knowing who I am and trusting what makes me feel good, what flatters my body when I'm feeling most com when I'm feeling most confident, mm. that really dictates how I dress. Well, you, every single time that we've met up, and I think it's what well, we've met like four times over this last year, you, you always look like super, like she's on point, right? Okay. I mean, that's, I mean, that is what your business is too. You always do look on point, but do you feel like there's some sort of pressure on you that you've created that like, if you bumped into someone in the grocery store, <laughs> one of your audience, and you're yes. like, you're not quite in the right outfit, do you feel Feel like you're being watched all the time about like what you're wearing yeah a little bit and the funny thing is like i'm super honest with my audience about it because i'll tell them if you bump into me in target because i'm in target every day <laughs> you're not gonna probably see me put together i mean it it, it happens uh you know i sometimes i go to the store in my pajamas i'm not gonna lie but i have had that happen i've run into people in real life and yeah I'm not looking so hot but i do feel the pressure it's funny because our last event that we went to together i was stressing out beforehand and saying to my husband like I, you know, I show up to things. I'm like, I'm the stylist. I'm supposed to look good in my outfits. I need yeah. to make sure that I have, you know, these outfits that I put together. And like, but I just wore all this stuff at the last event we went to. So yeah, when we do things, you know, where I'm seeing people on a regular basis, then I do try to step it up a little bit. Right. It's, and are you okay with this pressure, this thing that you've created? Because it's something that you've created that you're like, now you've got this standard. Like, are you enjoying that? Or does it make you stay accountable? It does. It holds me accountable. It really does. And it makes me stay on top of the trends and practice what I preach and walk the walk. And I think that that's important for my audience to know that I do that. But I think it's also important for them to know that you got to cut yourself some slack too. Mm -hmm. If you wake up one day and you just aren't feeling it, or if a week goes by, sometimes I get super busy. We do 12 launches a year. When we're in launch phase, it's just, it's insane. And I'll have a week go by where I'm just really not getting dressed or taking care of myself. And it's all it's all aspects of self-care. It's not just mm. not getting dressed. It's it's a lot of stuff. And I know then that I just need to say, this is okay. This mm. is a season. I will get through this. Mm -hmm. And I get right back into it again. I've noticed that too. Like sometimes I'll come into the office and I'm like, I feel so much better when I'm like in a, like an outfit that like at least matches. And mm. then I've got my, my hair done and my makeup. And I know with my, with my team too, like sometimes they'll come in. I'm like, I don't know what you're wearing today. We're like, like they're laughing because they know. Yeah. And they're like, they're like, they were running late and they just grabbed something. And like some, one of them didn't even brush their hair the other day. And I was like, your hair is wet. Do you need a hairbrush? Right. But then sometimes, you know, we'll come in and like, you know, everybody's like done up and like, that's, that's what it is. Like, and that's the honest part of it is yeah. that, you know, especially if we have a meeting or something in here, like I noticed that my team and myself will like, put a little bit more makeup on or like wear like nicer clothes. And yes. it's funny that we do show up more for other people rather than we show up for ourselves. So true. Um, so like, you know, when we do have these meetings or other people, I know that everyone's going to be looking like on point, right. but it's like, it's in those days that like, you're like, I don't really have to, mm -hmm. but actually it's not for other people. It's right. actually trying to like take it on that it's for us. It's, it truly is. And I mean, there's research behind this that shows that the way that we dress affects our self-esteem, our confidence, our motivation, all of these other factors. There's a there's a study uh, about the enclosed cognition effect where, you know, the clothes that you put on, you actually ad adapt the persona or adopt the persona of however you're dressed. Mm, so how yeah. you present yourself to the world has a lot to do with what you're wearing. Yeah. And I mean, I've just moved into this local area and I, I love it. There's so many bars and restaurants. And, you know, I was, I was telling Corey, telling my boyfriend, I was like, you know, I just, I want to go out for dinner again. Like, cause I'm in like sweats or I'm in, maybe I've been working out all day and I just want to put on a pair of heels mm -hmm. and a cute top and like go out. And he's like, you're like a different person here. I'm like, I know I'm just, I'm, I want to get out. Like, I want to <laughs> see this place. Like, you know, just going and having like a nice cocktail. Yes. And like, that makes me want to put on like a nice outfit because all of these bars and restaurants are right here. Right. So now you are getting into style. It was that really what prov like provoked you to start doing fitness more? Was the fitness come first or the, the get your pretty on? Cause I feel like it's kind of the same kind of time. It was, it was, it was actually the journey happened together. Honestly, uh, you know, once I started getting, it, it was a snowball effect in the other way in a good way, mm. you know, once I started getting into style and excited about my clothes again, then I started wanting to get back into fitness. You know, I think the first thing that I did was I started doing yoga on a more regular basis and you know, when you're wearing cute clothes and you want to show off toned arms and toned legs mm -hmm. and everything that kind of goes along with that. So I definitely think that the two journeys went hand in hand and they continue to, you know, it's 
it's just been an evolution this entire time over the course of the past seven years. And um, it just keeps getting better, honestly. So you feel like the style came first. You started to like dress up, mm -hmm. feel a bit better. And then it was like, oh, I have motivation to work out. Yes, exactly. And, you know, I think it can work the other way too. Yeah, you right. work mm -hmm. out, you start losing weight, you start toning up. And a lot of the women that come into my program have are coming in because they need to rebuild a wardrobe because they've lost weight mm -hmm. and they're not sure where to start. That It's been so long since they've shopped that they don't even know where to go. And one of the most frequently asked questions I get is, if I'm still in the process of losing weight, mm. how do I dress? Yep. And I always say, dress the body you have right now, because that's the thing that's going to motivate you. If you're wearing really loose baggy jeans that aren't making you feel good, go out and get one pair of jeans that fits you really good right now, because those Nothing are smaller. flatter. It's literally like right now, right now. And it's okay if you wear that pair of jeans every single day while you continue your weight loss journey mm -hmm. and then size down again, but don't just keep defaulting back to the stuff that's in your closet that's too big or loose or baggy that's not making you feel good because that's not going to help to continue to motivate you. Uh, yeah, so you got to throw them out straight away. Yeah. Like you have to like, I remember when I helped my mom lose weight and she still had all of the clothes. Mm -hmm. She still had everything in her closet. Like do it for safety. Yes. Yeah. And I'm like, you, like you, one of the biggest things you have to do right now is like, get is get rid of it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's the thing. It's like, if someone comes into the program, is there like a clean out thing that, yes. that they kind of need to go? You're like, yes, there is definitely a clean out <laughs> yes. thing. <laughs> yes, there is. Yes, there is. So we... <laughs> I want to make this mandatory, but I can't because I can't come to everybody's <laughs> yeah. house. Yeah, say, literally, Alison will if you do not do it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I do a quarterly closet clean out, and it doesn't have to be quarterly. It's just a recommendation. Mm -hmm. As long as you do this once a year, it's great. Or even one time is super powerful. Just It'll do one. With you. <laughs> yes. She's just saying, like, if for goodness just sake, if once. four is too many, don't worry. Do, do one do or one. just do it once. I. Yeah. I know. I'm, I've got so much the shit. Fact it's is, unbelievable. We only wear 20% of what's in our closets. Mm. So if you take out that other 80% and you just put the 20% back in at first, you're going to say, I have no clothes. I'm mm. like freaking out. But the fact is that's all you're wearing anyway. So it's okay. But at least you know exactly what you have. That's going to help to cut down on decision fatigue immediately because you're going to walk in your closet and see the things that you're actually wearing, not all four seasons of things that you've had for five years or whatever. Mm. So just curating it down to just those pieces. So I say, take everything out, go through it, separate it into categories. I call them cash, stash, and trash. So cash is stuff that you're going to sell or whatever you want to do with it. Trash mm -hmm. is stuff that you just basically need to get rid of. And then stash are the things that you're going to keep. So in okay. your stash box, when you're done, take all of that. I usually use boxes, but you can use whatever method you want to. Take all of that stuff, put it back in your closet, hang it up nice and neat, get some nice velvet hangers, whatever you want. Like Velvet hangers. This is the second person this week yes. that has told me about velvet, velvet hangers. hangers. You've got to have them. They don't leave bumps on your shoulders of your sweater. And they're and thinner. They, they're thinner. You can put more in your closet. It looks beautiful. Mm -hmm. Velvet hangers. And then once you have that back in there, you can really see what you have as far as your closet staples are concerned. And I have a closet staples shopping list on my website. It's free if you want to download it. But you can go through that list and check off anything that's on there that you already have and then fill in the blanks with the pieces that you need. And once you have those core basics in there, you can already create tons of mix and match outfits just from those mm. core basics. If someone's like, I hate my body, I don't like going shopping, you know, they've, they've, they're in a body that they don't love, like mm -hmm. what's the first step to get them out of something that is like baggy and really like actually not really flattering at all. Right. Like it, it, what's the first step to do? Yeah. So it's, uh, I'm glad you said that because I find that women default to wearing baggier clothes over their bodies when they, there's something that they want to hide. And I always tell them, pick your favorite body part and highlight it. Like everybody mm. has their favorite body part. Maybe it's your sh toned shoulders, your arms, maybe it's your legs, you know, choose one body part that you can highlight in your outfit. And then it's okay if you want to do something loose that skims over the mm -hmm. uh, areas that may be problem areas, but keyword being skims over, not, <laughs> not drenched, <tense laughs> over. Exactly. Don't skim, not drenched. Okay. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that's super important that you don't just try to cover everything up from head to toe. You know, we can all find something and maybe you love your ankles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Freaking rock, rock those ankles. <laughs> yes. What you know, I've, I used to get so caught up in like sizes. And 
so like I, don't know, I have to be like a size like zero. I mean, we had that the whole phase in the 90s of, you know, size zero, like the models, everybody was super skinny. That's when I got down to like 86 pounds. Oh and it was like, it was such an era. And I feel like we get so caught up in the labels, but every single clothing brand has like a different kind of size. Yes. Like when are you when you're teaching people to like go out and close, you know, are you like right like follow this size guide or is it like look just pick it up and see if it fits? Exactly. Ignore the sizes. If you're ordering online, order three sizes, especially if it's mm. pants. Like cuz you can return them. Most retailers you can do free shipping and returns and get it in your house and try it on. Don't worry about the number in the label. Worry about what fits and flatters your body best. Women, I find, tend to wear pants that are too baggy and loose a lot of times. Like you want to make sure that they're mm -hmm. going to be the most flattering if they are actually a bit tight. Yes, yeah, a bit yeah. tight on your body. Yeah. So don't always default to doing the baggier version of it. And if you do a baggy pant, that's fine. You know, that's, those are in style right now. We have the looser fit and the silhouettes are changing. Then do a, a tighter, more form fitting top with mm -hmm. that just to kind of balance out those proportions a little bit. So you talk about like all this styling. What are your, what do your friends and family think of like, cause you're super successful. I mean, your, your launch that you had, like, I, re I remember it. She told me we sat down at dinner and she was like, Oh my God, we've just had this amazing launch. It's done incredible. And I'm like, yes, like, yes. Like, and then I stand up. I'm like, everybody, like Allison's like, you know, cause you'd impacted so many people and it was like, Oh, it's really cool that I get to share this with people because not everybody may understand what you do mm -hmm. in your friends and family. Like right. what, what's been the reaction to from your, your, from your family, your parents, your, mm -hmm. your spouse? Like what does everyone think of like get your pretty on? Uh, I mean, everybody's just, it, it's funny. A lot of people don't understand it. They don't. They're like, Oh, that's cute. You do a vlog at your kitchen table. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, mm, yeah. Not exactly. Yeah. No, no, that's not what I do. Um, so, but I think that they're really all kind of come, obviously my husband knows everything, but I think my, you know, my other extended family members are starting to come around on it to really understand the impact that it's having. And I think the biggest thing that has been the game changer is that a lot of my family members follow me on social and they're seeing the members of my community comment and say how the programs changed their lives. Mm. And I think that was the big thing for them. Like my mom sent me a text last week and um, I was having a rough day and she uh, had sent me a text and said, I see what you've built from the ground up. And she mm. said, and I see I just what the chills. women say oh. that do your program and how you're changing their lives. Yeah. And I think that that it's, it's hard to conceptualize and explain to them the business side of it, but they can see that. And that, and that's just really cool. Mm. Honestly, that just gave me chills. I, I remember when I first got started and I was doing the YouTube videos and like my, my mom and dad just like, they just didn't understand it. They were like, right. how does, what's this? And it's new. It's like, it was YouTube. It's yes. like, and this whole online stuff, like it's totally new. And it's when other people start like, you know, start posting about you mm -hmm. and like, you've changed my life. That's like, it's a game changer. It really is. So what is next for you? What is 2020? Like you've got all of this amazing yes. things. You've got, I know we spoke a little bit about at Lewis House's mastermind, which is how, how we met mm -hmm. about things that are coming up for you. You've just got a book deal as yes, well. So like what, what's 2020 and 2021? I feel like you've already got like the next five years do, mapped out. You're right. So 2020, <laughs> uh, we're going to be launching our programs as usual. We're going to add in some new programs. I'm going to do a menswear program. Ah, yeah, excited so exciting. Yes. Is your yes. husband helping? Are yes, you... he is. He's okay. Helping. I think he has a really good core wardrobe of, of closet staples for men. So he's going to collaborate with me on that, which is exciting. Does he, does he love style? Does like, is he, he can does. he dress himself? Yeah. Well, he's gotten into it more, you know, over the past few well, years. Well, he's going to match what you're wearing. Otherwise think... he's going to be underdressed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think, I think that that's, okay, I'm going to get this for Corey for him. sure. Cause yeah. all Corey wears is like a t-shirt and some Hurley oh, shorts. We'll help him. We'll help yes. Him. Yeah. Okay. For sure. So we're definitely going to do that. Um, I've got my workwear challenges. We're doing office attire, which we've always done our seasonal challenges. I'm going to finish my book. I have till June of 2020 to get my manuscript in. And then into 2021, my big goal is I want to um, release my own capsule wardrobe line. I would like to do a 15 piece capsule wardrobe that mm. works for everyone and just is a really good core of staples that women can have in their closets to create mix and match outfits. Yeah, because everything that you put on there, your audience will go, goes and buy straight away because you're giving them all of the exactly where to buy it from. Other retailers. Other so, retailers. Yeah, and why not have like 
absolutely your own thing where your name's on it. Yes. I'm so excited for you. We were like thinking about like the name of it and how we're going to write it yes. on the label. Like <laughs> so much fun. Um, well, I am really excited about our collaboration that we are Me doing. Too. Those guys at home who do not know, uh, we're going to be creating something together that is going to help you get your daily workout in and also your daily outfit. I mean, yes. I can't think of like a better combination, like whether you're into fitness right now and you don't know what to wear, then you've got Allison's going to be the solution. And maybe you are know exactly what to wear, but you're like, hey, I want to change up my body um, and do some workouts. Then I'm going to be able to solve that too. So we are so excited to bring that to you in uh, January 2020. We're going to put all of the details below. Allison, how can they find you all on social media? Get your stuff and yes. get everything. Uh, get your pretty on .com and get your pretty on everywhere on social. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm so glad that you flew all the way from Dallas to <laughs> come here and be on the podcast. Guys, make sure that you head on over to Allison's page, all the details below. Give her a lot of love and also give this podcast five stars so we can keep on making these new episodes for you. Have a great week and we'll see you next time. Bye, guys. You make a mistake and then you cost the whole team or are you going to dominate under pressure? And we pulled up there and we gave the best shot we could and turned on a win light and we won the championship in 2017.